real numbers, we can factorise a polynomial down to its quadratic factors, but sometimes we can't go any further. With complex numbers, we can factorise all polynomials with real coefficients right down to their linear factors. Let's have a look at some examples of these. In example 1, we will factorise z squared plus 4. Now if we are working in real numbers, we can't factorise that at all. But now we're working in complex numbers, we can. And we use a special trick here that we use quite often. And that is that we replace the plus 4 with minus 4i squared. And what that means is that we make the sum into a difference. And furthermore, it's the difference of two squares. And then we can factorise it. So the z squared minus 4i squared becomes z minus 2i times z plus 2i. In example 2, we'll factorise z squared plus 6z plus 10. And the way we'll do this is we complete the square. Now, we take z squared plus 6z. The coefficient of z is 6. We halve it, which is 3, and we square it, which is 9. And so we add the 9 to the z squared plus 6z. And that means we've got to subtract 9 from the other number, which is the 10. And the z squared plus 6z plus 9 factorises into z plus 3 all squared. And the other number we have plus 1. And then we know that we change that sum into a difference of two squares by writing it as z plus 3 all squared minus i squared. And then factorising it using a difference of two squares, z plus 3 minus i times z plus 3 plus i. In example 3, we're asked to factorise a cubic function, z cubed plus 1, factorise it into its linear factors. Well... I expect that you have come across in the past the factorization of the sum of two cubes. And that's what we use here because we really have z cubed plus 1 cubed. And using the factorization of the sum of two cubes, we get z plus 1 times z squared minus z plus 1. So look up that uh, uh, factorization if you can't remember it straight away. Now we will factorise the quadratic expression. So again, we'll complete the square. So the coefficient of z is minus 1. We halve it, which is minus a half, and we square it, which is a quarter. So we'll add a quarter to z squared minus z, and we'll subtract a quarter from the 1, which will make plus 3 quarters out the back. And now we replace that sum of two terms in the second bracket with the difference of two terms. So we get z squared minus z plus a quarter minus three quarters i squared. Uh, and then that becomes the difference of two squares, which we can write as z plus one. And then the second bracket will become z minus a half all squared minus root three over two i all squared. And that factorises to z plus 1, z minus a half minus root 3 on 2i times z minus a half plus root 3 on 2i. Example 4 is longer and a little bit harder. It asks us to factorise a polynomial which we'll call p of z, and that is z cubed plus 6z squared plus 13z plus 10. Now, to get the first factor, we'll use the factor theorem. And what we have to do is look at the constant term at the end of the polynomial, which is 10, and consider the factors of 10. And they are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10. Hence, the possible factors of P of Z will be Z plus or minus 1, Z plus or minus 2, Z plus or minus 5, z plus or minus 10. Now, we'll use trial and error to uh, get the first factor. So you try p of 1, and you'll find that that's not equal to 0. Work out p of minus 1, you'll find that's not equal to 0. p of 2, and work out that, and that's not equal to 0. But when you work out p of minus 2, when you substitute minus 2 in for the z, in the p of z, 
the whole expression will work out to zero. And by the factor theorem, that will tell us that z plus 2 is a factor of the polynomial p of z. So we get one factor, that's the z plus 2. Now, we divide that z plus 2 into the p of z using either long division or synthetic division. I'm going to leave you to do that, and you should get z squared plus 4z plus 5 as the quotient. So what that tells us is that p of z is z plus 2 times this quadratic factor, z squared plus 4z plus 5. And then we change the quadratic uh, factor into the difference of two squares and we can get its factors as we've done before. So just working on the quadratic factor, we know that we use the um, uh, completing the square. So the coefficient of the z is 4, the halve it, that's 2, and um, square it, that's 4. So we add 4 to z squared plus 4z and subtract 4 from the 5, which makes a 1 outside the bracket. Then the z squared plus 4z plus 4 will factorise to z plus 2 all squared and we'll have z plus 2 all squared plus 1. And then we change that to a difference of two squares, so the z plus 2 all squared minus i squared, and, the, and so the square bracket will factorise out to z plus 2 minus i times z plus 2 plus i. So the final factorisation will be z plus 2 times z plus 2 minus i times z plus 2 plus i. It's time for you to see if you can factorise a quadratic expression or a cubic expression into its linear factors. So take out the pen and the paper and uh, have a go at exercise 3, which is factorise z squared plus 8z plus 21 into its linear factors. So stop the video and have a go at that. And then when you're finished, you can uh, restart the video and you can see the solution which I'll put for you. Well, what we do is we take the z squared plus 8z and we complete the square there. So the uh, coefficient of uh, z is 8, you halve it, that's 4, and square it makes 16. So you add 16 and you subtract 16 on the right-hand side. The z squared plus 8z plus 16 will then factorise into z plus 4 all squared, and the plus 21 minus 16 will give you plus 5. We'll write that plus 5 as minus 5i squared. So we'll have z plus 4 all squared minus 5i uh, squared. That uh, is the difference of two squares, so that will give us z plus 4 minus square root of 5 times i times z plus 4 plus the square root of 5 times i, and that is the solution. Next exercise, you're asked to factorise a cubic polynomial, that's z cubed minus 64, into its linear factors. Again, stop the video and have a go at this yourself. When you're finished, you can restart the video and I'll give you the solution. Well, z cubed minus 64 can be written as z cubed minus 4 cubed, which means that that is the difference of two cubes, and there's a formula for that, which I know that you are aware of, and when you use that formula, you'll get z minus 4 times all of z squared plus 4z plus 16. And now we have to factorise the quadratic expression in the, uh, in the second bracket there, and we do that by completing the square as before. So uh, with the z squared plus 4z, the coefficient of z is 4, we halve it, that's 2, we square it, that's 4, so we add the 4, and then we subtract the 4 from the 16 to make a plus 12. And then uh, in the on the third line there, we'll see that the uh, square bracket, inside the square bracket, we have z plus 2 all squared, minus 12i squared. We change that plus 12 into the minus 12i squared and that gives us the difference of two squares and that will uh, then factorise out to uh, 
the in, in total will have z minus 4 in the bracket out the front uh, times z plus 2 minus root 12 times i times all of z plus 2 plus root 12 times i. And then we can simplify that root 12 uh, and we'll get our answer in more simple form. Uh, z minus 4 times all of z plus 2 minus 2 root 3 times i times all of z plus 2 plus 2 root 3 times i. If you got the last two exercises correct, you should be right for the harder exercise 5. This is express the polynomial P of Z, which is Z cubed plus 3Z squared minus 7Z minus 33, as a product of its linear factors. So once again, you stop the video now and have a go at this by yourself. However, if you do need some help, I'll give you a guided solution. I'll uh, give you the steps, but you will have to do the actual calculations and algebra yourself. Well, the first thing you do is find the positive and negative factors of minus 33. And these will include minus 1 and 1, minus 3 and 3 and show that p of minus 1, p of 1, and p of minus 3 are all non-zero, but that p of 3 actually is zero. You do that by substituting those numbers into the polynomial. And hence, by the factor theorem, z minus 3 is a factor of the polynomial p of z. Then you show by long division or by synthetic division that when P of Z is divided by Z minus 3, the quotient is Z squared plus 6Z plus 11. Then you can write the polynomial P of Z as Z minus 3 times Z squared plus 6Z plus 11. And then it's easy. All you do is factorise that uh, second uh, bracket there with the uh, quadratic term. And you will complete the square and that will give you z plus 3 all squared plus 2 in the second uh, square bracket there. Uh, then you change that to the difference of two squares. So inside the square bracket, you'll get z plus 3 all squared minus 2i squared. And the difference of two squares there will give you, all together, you'll get z minus 3 times all of z plus 3 minus square root of 2 times i times all of z plus 3 plus square root of 2 times i. So I hope you got that one right. If you did, it's a very good effort. We'll finish off this lecture by solving some quadratic equations. We know that quadratic equations with real coefficients always have solutions in complex numbers. We'll use two methods. Now that we know the factorization, we can use that, or we can use the uh, well-known quadratic formula. As an example, we'll find all solutions to the quadratic equation z squared minus 6z plus 20 equals 0. And the first method we'll use is factorization. So to factorize the quadratic on the left-hand side, we need to complete the square. So the coefficient of z is minus 6. We halve it, that's minus 3, and we square it, which is 9. So we add 9 to the z squared minus 6z, and we subtract 9 from the 20 to give us the plus 11 on the left-hand side. Then the z squared minus 6z plus 9, that will factorise to z minus 3 all squared, and then we'll write the plus 11 as minus 11i squared. Then we have the difference of two squares on the left-hand side, so that will break up to z minus 3 minus root 11i times z minus 3 plus root 11i, and all of that will be equal to zero. So uh, then we put each of the brackets equal to zero, so that will give us z minus 3 minus root 11i equals zero, or z minus 3 plus root 11i equals 0, and that will give us the solution z equals 3 plus root 11i, 
or z equals 3 minus root 11i. Now we'll solve the same equation again, but using our other method, which is using the quadratic formula. The equation is z squared minus 6z plus 20 equals 0. Using the formula, we get z equals minus minus 6 plus or minus the square root of all of minus 6 all squared minus 4 times 1 times 20 all over 2 times 1. This will simplify to 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 80 all over 2, which is 6 plus or minus square root of minus 44 all over 2. We'll break that square root of minus 44 up into the square root of 44 times the square root of minus 1. And then the 44 on the next line will break up to 4 times 11 and the square root of minus 1, of course, is i. So this will give us uh, 6 plus or minus 2 times root 11 times i all over 2. We can take the common factor of 2 out the front of, in the numerator and that will give us 2 outside of all of 3 plus or minus square root of 11 times i all over 2. The 2s will cancel out and we'll get 3 plus or minus square root of 11 times i. So that gives us our two answers, z equals 3 plus root 11i or z equals 3 minus root 11i. In this last exercise, I ask you to do two quadratic equations and um, I think you should do them in both methods. That's the completing the square and the formula. So they should be pretty easy. The first one is z squared minus 8z plus 17 equals 0 and the second one is z squared plus 6z plus 15 equals 0. I think you should uh, stop the uh, videos now and have a go at these and I won't give you all the uh, working uh, for the solutions, I'll just give you the answers. The answers are, the first one is z equals 4 plus i and 4 minus i, and the second one z equals minus 3 plus root 6i and minus 3 minus root 6 times i. Includes a series of lectures on complex numbers. If you have not already subscribed to our channel, can you please do so? I remind you that at our website at Solve and Evolve, we have practice quizzes and also a final exam so that you can test your understanding of the material in this course. Thank you for watching and look out for future videos that I'll make on other topics.